uh, hi. I, um, I think I wrote down the wrong address. Uh, I need to register a car. Oh, sir, you've come to exactly the right place. But this is a liquor store. True, but it's not just any liquor store. We've got licenses, we've got dog licenses, we've got fishing licenses, we've got birth certificates, and we've got oh, death certificates. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson, we've talked about this before. Put her in the back. Come on, Mrs. Johnson, come on. Put her in the room with all the balls. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, we've just opened up an extended health care center in the back. <laughs> Actually, this one-stop shopping is going to be great for the family. When Mrs. J finally does leave us, uh, you know, God bless her soul. <laughs> they won't have to go as far to change the paperwork. And they'll be able to stock up for the wake. Pink slip, registration? Uh, yeah. All right. Is that Sambuca? No. Yeah. Yeah. A ridiculous exaggeration or a sign of the future? Welcome to the slippery slope of privatization, Alberta style. Privatization emerged in, in the 1980s mostly uh, when we were facing a global recession and, and it really sort of took root under Margaret Thatcher in the United Kingdom and it emerged here in Canada at the same time or shortly after and the, the Alberta Tories really took, up, took it up with quite a zeal uh, but it was under Ralph Klein that it, it, it became a, almost a missionary purpose and really started to predominate across Alberta. Ralph Klein actually specifically said that he wanted to get the Alberta government out of the business of being in business. What we have here in Alberta now is a war. It's an ideological one, but it is a war just the same. The public sector is under attack by the forces of privatization, and there have been lots of casualties. It, it was an incredible attack on every public service and on public servants in general. Access and equity are, are Canadian, fundamental Canadian values. The government's perspective at the time was that it, it, it would be better run on a profit mandate. We're the province that privatized and uh, deregulated the most. In a lot of countries and states around the world, the record has been nothing short of abysmal. The main thing that we lost uh, in the new game of privatization and deregulation was the loss of control. Uh, people had democratic, popular control over these services and over these institutions. The second thing that we lost, though, was a decent labor policy because the thinking behind privatization very clearly, and it was repeated often by government ministers, was that the work was going to be done more cheaply by people who didn't demand these high wages and these wonderful benefits. The proponents of privatization are true believers, but AUP is convinced that they're not in step with the views of most Albertans. The key to defeating the forces of privatization lies in winning the hearts and minds of average ordinary citizens, convincing them that maintaining a strong, dynamic public sector is in everybody's best interest. Putting the profit motive into delivering those services changes the whole dynamic of how we as a society view those services. You will end up with a huge social cost in terms of homelessness, crime rates, um, and a society that has alcohol and substance abuse problems as compared to one which is based on the model Canada used to value of caring for each other in a society and having a safe and secure community for all. Those who champion privatization have a predictable list of pet arguments to justify handing public services over to the private sector. But the truth is, it's a list of myths that can be turned right back around on them, underscoring exactly the reasons that privatization is not part of the Alberta advantage. The other side argues the public service is inefficient and wasteful. That's a myth. The public service is run for and by the citizens of this province. 
Inefficiency and waste are constantly monitored and corrected because as taxpayers, we demand it of our government. And any government that fails to do so will ultimately fall through the democratic process. They'll be voted out of office. Premier, um, can you tell us now who gave the order to shred the document? Private enterprisers, on the other hand, have no comparable system of checks and balances. Quite frankly, they'll charge as much and offer as little as they can get away with. Okay, let's see how I can make a little more money this year than I made last year this time. All right, okay, so on top of her food, bed, and meds, daily physio, and monthly bingo, we'll have to charge her administration costs. Yes, which will be that much. <laughs> yes, uh, ooh, and to all that we add our contingency, just in case. Our contingency contingency or as I like to call it, the just in case, just in case. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Cha-ching. So this myth that the private sector can do it cheaper, I, I, I can't imagine where it even came from. It's so uh, inaccurate. In the private health insurance industry, the Canadian government is able to do it for 1.3% overhead costs whereas the private sector has over 13% in overhead. And this stems from the fact that they have to pay for profit, they have to pay higher marketing and, comp and, and competition costs, they have to pay for higher CEO salaries, and they have a smaller unit for administration than the public sector. So there's a myriad of reasons why it's many, many times the cost for admin in the private sector. 1.3% versus 13.2%. That's a tenfold increase in the overhead between public and private health care. So just exactly who is inefficient and wasteful? There's a grain of truth to that myth, nasty though it is. Competition for public contracts between private companies can mean lower costs for the consumer, temporarily. Because in order to win public contracts, private firms have to submit the cheapest bid. And in order to do so, they almost invariably slash costs the simplest way they can on the backs of their employees through wage cuts and layoffs. Oh, I'm really, really sorry, hun, but sometimes the higher priced talent has just got to move on. Say hi to your mom. Well, kid, what do you know about bedpans? You good at lifting heavy stuff? <laughs> when you hand off a service to a private company, you're handing it off to a profit maximizer. And they have to make their profit somehow. If they can't make it through lower labor costs, they're going to make it through reduced services. This one is a myth too. Governments are held accountable at election time. And because of this, they insist that public employees at their various departments and agencies are responsive to the evolving needs and wants of the tax-paying and voting clientele. 